Welcome everybody to How Fast Will It Go and today we're dealing with the 1989 Ferrari F40 Competizione. Now this is 1,191 horsepower, 623 pounds feet of torque from a 6 litre twin turbocharged V12 engine. The car itself now weighs 2,312 pounds and it has all wheel drive and it can do 0 to 60 in 2.140 seconds and 0 to 104.047 seconds. So yeah, this is easily one of the more powerful and lighter cars that we've had on this series. The only uh, issue I can see with this is the torque, which doesn't sound all that much, especially for a, a car that is going to be going up some gradients at times. So uh, yeah, I am a little bit worried about that. But it does have all of the grip in the world with the all-wheel drive system and an aero, which might well limit its top speed, but it will certainly help in terms of uh, handling. And uh, yeah, at the end of the day, it still has nearly 1,200 horsepower and uh, very little in the way of weight. So uh, yeah, let's get out there and uh, see what it can do. So yeah, extremely high revving now. Um, yeah, sounds insane. As you can expect. Yeah, this was basically the light and more race oriented version of the standard F40, which was hardly a slow car, and we're already doing 65. That's 270. Any more? Come on, there's some more revs there. Oh, I can see the Pagani there, despite being in gold. There's a bit more there, there's plenty more revs. It's holding its speed remarkably well. And as you can see, its suspension is struggling with the additional uh, speed because we couldn't actually upgrade the suspension. Couldn't even upgrade the tyres in any way, so uh, yeah, a lot of this is still stock. The tyres are stock in terms of their tread as well as their width. The suspension is stock as well. It's hardly a bad thing when you consider this was meant to be a track car to start with, but a track car from 1989, so uh, even though that's inevitably going to be better than any road car from that period, it's still going to be under the uh, kind of quality of a uh, track car, say, from today. So, uh, yeah, the suspension, as you can see, when uh, we're uh, well up to top speed, is uh, quite wobbly, even with all that downforce still really really quick and it's managed to match the Lamborghini Aventador J from the previous episode which is obviously a far newer car this has handling way better than I was expecting to be honest but not quite enough to miss that yellow Ford there a little bit twitchy as well Whoa, the suspension is really doing weird things. It's not meant to be uh, doing these kind of speeds. I don't think it was able to do the same kind of speed as the original F40 because of the uh, additional downforce it had. So, yeah, this is well out of its original uh, remit. Still slightly increasing speed even up a hill, so the torque isn't as big of a problem as I expected. Pretty much matching the speed from the other side of the motorway, which is, again is not all that common. But yeah, there, 270 mile an hour is still really, really impressive for my car from 1989, especially since, like I said, it's matched the Lamborghini Ventador J from the previous episode, as well as other modern cars like the Mercedes AMG GT4 Door Coupe, the uh, Honda NXXR GT, uh, the Vauxhall Monaro VXR, it's also beaten the Lamborghini Mercia Largo, the uh, Lamborghini Diablo GTR, the Lotus 11, Sleen S7, Pagani Zonda, Cinque, Roadster, Porsche 911 GT3 RS, Ford GT, Mercedes AMG E63 S and the uh, Mitsubishi Starion. And a lot of those cars are newer than this, so uh, yeah, that is a big surprise. But it is slower than a Lamborghini Centenario, Hot Wheels Twin Mill, Shelby Monaco, King Cobra, Cummins XCCX, McLaren Speedtail and obviously the Jaguar D-Type, McLaren F1 and Rosion Q1 which are still the uh, top three vehicles that we've had on this series but yeah for a car from 1989 with the same suspension it had from then, the same tyres that it had from then is uh, yeah mightily impressive even more so when you consider it's got way more tor uh, torque and horsepower than it had originally while also dealing with far higher speeds so uh, 
yeah, mighty impressed from this. Uh, I imagine it would have been better had we had better tyres on it, but we're not allowed to swap them out, so that is a bit of a shame. But yeah, it would have been interesting to see what it could have done on uh, newer tyres and with newer suspension. Nonetheless, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.